Hello everyone! You may wonder why I'm showing you a page with the game. Uh, I will come to that shortly, but first um, I hope you had a very success successful jump into the new year. Uh, for, unfortunately I had a little setback. Uh, first uh, we've got uh, the RSV. As you can hear it in my voice, um, I will maybe coughing uh, in the video, so I apologize beforehand. I have two boys at home, of course, uh, they are now uh, teenagers, um, in the spare time they are love playing games, uh, who doesn't, <laughs> I, do, I don't play as much as I was uh, in my uh, younger years, but now and then I'm still, uh, still uh, uh, playing this uh, Currently in cloud, uh, I don't know if you're aware of the shadow uh, service uh, because I don't have a Windows computer at home um, if I'm not uh, counting the virtual machines. Um, and uh, as we did it in our times uh, when we were freezing the Commodore 64 with an external cartridges, I don't know if you remember that, to enter the game box, uh, these days kids also use all sorts of tools uh, for, I don't know, auto-aiming, auto-clicking, similar stuff. Uh, and one of the one of the games that boys are also playing is the Raid Shadow Legends. So, uh, I didn't actually know that this year is already like four years old or something like that. <clears throat> um, and never played before. Um, maybe few months ago that I stumbled about it. I played a little. Um, so I would not go into details. I think that's uh, one of the most uh, mobile role-playing game uh, played by many people. It's developed by the Plarium games. Um, basically it's a fantasy world where players take the role of the champion at the beginning and then it embarks on a journey to defeat an ancient evil, so typical RPG <coughs> uh, content. Uh, <coughs> and you collect, so the player collect a number of these different champions uh, from different factions. Uh, each of the champions have unique abilities and strengths and uh, you can form the teams uh, <coughs> to battle against uh, some enemies or uh, game modes, bosses, uh, whatever. Uh, so it's single player, <clears throat> you have also multiplayer content, so PvP. Uh, and so basically it's free to play, uh, but uh, of course you're pumped with uh, in-app purchases for players who want to advance faster in the game. The game can also be played on the PC or Mac uh, with the service called Plarium. Play. The game has an API um, that allow, allows developers, so the Plarium developers, uh, to access specific game data. Uh, there is no official SDK available, so the software development kit um, community who, re who plays the game, uh, they have created their unofficial SDK <coughs> using the API from the game. Um, and I need to from this, this is still not officially supported by Plarium. One of these uh, SDKs is this RAID toolkit. Um, <clears throat> and when my boys uh, told me about it, I, I, did, I, mean, I didn't even know that this exists, <laughs> frankly speaking. Uh, they come to me uh, and, hey Papa, you were once a game developer at Travion. Um, can you show us maybe an example how this software development can, can be used to create maybe some new tool? Um, and, of course, I looked uh, at the documentation, which is actually scarce. There is not a lot of information here, um, how this can be installed. Um, so, as I said, uh, the Plarium Play allows you to run this on PC or Mac, but this RAID toolkit is, can only be installed and built uh, on Windows 10 or Windows 11. Um, and um, when I dip a little further, I actually saw that the, the toolkit itself provides uh, 
web API uh, on the loopback or where WebSocket service uh, on the port 9090. That actually means that you can access it from the browser or another uh, or any other scripting language. Uh, as a Linux kit, uh, I decided to go into the direction of some kind of a CLI tool and a Python um, because the Python um, is it somehow near to me, although, although I'm not a um, Python developer per se, um, so you need to give me a little slack here. Um, um, I said it to myself, yeah, I will try to do this in Python and um, see how this will go. And um, yeah, let's let's first uh, show you what I've done. Um, and then we'll try to to run this on the actual game um, <clears throat> program, which is called Extractor. And um, <clears throat> this Extractor actually communicates with the WebSocket and it dumps the game data in JSON format. So this is the first thing that I actually uh, found it useful. Um, what surprised me was that <laughs> um, there is inconsistency with the dump. Um, so um, there is a so-called account dump, which dumps uh, all information <clears throat> about the artifacts, uh, hero, and some other information. And if we uh, do the same dump in Python, um, we are getting, uh, we would get the same result, uh, but there is an interface when we dump only the artifacts, um, which can be seen here in this JSON, JSON file, um, but the information that is dumped, um, it has actually the same value, uh, but the keys are different. So, uh, this is quite interesting. Um, so we have, for example, here is activated, but in this this dump is activated. So we have kind uh, ID and set kind ID, and here we have the uh, kind and set kind. So this is a little annoying. Uh, I already asked the community um, if this is a feature or a bug, but I didn't get any answer back. So. Um, this is not uh, what you want uh, uh, as a developer to have in a contract. So, <laughs> um, okay, um, but uh, why I'm mentioning this is because um, I started uh, at the beginning only with this data, <clears throat> as I'm as I am on the Mac and I don't have direct access to the. Um, <clears throat> to the web API, so I have to wrote, um, um, I would say, <coughs> an interface <coughs> uh, which mocks, uh, which um, reads this uh, uh, dump data, um, so I'm not, uh, so I don't need to access the, the, web, uh, uh, the web API itself. Um, so, uh, the code itself, uh, it's on GitHub. You can actually uh, go and see into details, but uh, um, there is a little uh, class uh, that I wrote uh, uh, that, you, that uses the content management uh, with the simple configuration flag, uh, which uh, uh, tells them uh, if I'm using the right toolkit uh, or I'm using the mock one. So I'm using mock mock-up for my local development. Um, so this is the, the, the flag. So if I set this to true, then I can um, access the data, which is in JSON file. Uh, if this is set to false, I need to have a RAID toolkit installed um, um, and the uh, game must be running. Um, and then I can access the, the data directly from the game. This. Uh, it's just a basic example or basic usage. 
I mostly did so I can I, I, I can show my kids uh, and if they want to they actually uh, can can uh, develop further of maybe anyone else uh, uh, and could be easily extended uh, to perform more powerful operations uh, like search permutations or finding the best equipment for the champion or identifying the crappy items or whatever because Python is quite powerful for, uh, when uh, um, so with <clears throat> data manipulation and stuff like that um, and yeah this is actually frankly speaking my biggest Python project uh, mostly that I use Python uh, in my DevOps um, a journey for uh, 50 liners uh, that are doing some kind of magic in automation process I you I'm using the Poetry, um, this is the dependency man management tool for Python. What I've used uh, here, package for creating the beautiful command line interfaces in composable way. This is called Click um, and tabulate for uh, tabulating the data on the console. The Ray Toolkit itself, it's a client. Uh, uh, which uses the WebSocket client for communication. Pydantic, uh, I, uh, because I'm coming from the Java world where, where I was uh, used to work with the models and uh, DTOs uh, and stuff like that, uh, I wanted to have something similar in Python, but um, um, Python itself usually does not need that because that uh, he it has its own data classes but there is uh, the uh, package called Pydantic uh, which actually uh, parses uh, uh, it's not only the parsing uh, used for parsing but also um, used use for uh, data validation and stuff like that um, Tomly is for that config Toml file and this is basically everything. Um, so these models are um, are now uh, taken from that JSON that I had um, and um, what is also interesting that I made is some game data so um, because the JSON itself uh, it has some unique keys uh, which are not human readable um, so I had to make this uh, m some kind of mapping and this is uh, easily done um, with JSON files um, so there are some artifact types factions sets and stuff like that uh, it took me some time to put this together but uh, once this is done then it's practically very easy to do everything else um and yeah let's go to see uh, um, uh, the program itself uh, so let's first deactivate the virtual environment uh, so as I mentioned, uh, we need to have a Python uh, installed, uh, which I have 3.10, also 3.11 could also be used. And there is uh, one uh, uh, tool called Poetry, um, and this is for the dependency management. So um, if you if you can see, I have the dot virtual environment folder which is actually <clears throat> what this poetry is doing um, if I say poetry installed it probably won't do anything um, because there are already uh, dependencies installed okay what file is up not up to date okay doesn't really matter uh, but um, you can use poetry shell uh, to start a new virtual environment or um, I can do it the old way. So I now have all the dependency um, available in my uh, virtual environment of the Python and uh, I can then run my command line tool. So it's called Ray Controller. Uh, let me do it like that because this is how I need to do it in the Windows 
and this is currently my Mac machine. Uh, and basically what it does at the beginning, it just dumps the help message. So we have like an account uh, command and uh, accounts uh, plural and there is, an, uh, there is an option get all and uh, what's first uh, uh, telling me that I'm actually access not accessing the RTK, RTK um, client because uh, I'm in the, my development mode so the data is mocked and it's actually read from the JSON file so uh, it's this file which is read but the interface uh, when running this live is actually the same so uh, that's how it needs to be implemented and secondly, um, there is a artifact artifacts command, and uh, it's get all, and it will get me all the artifacts. Um, currently, maybe this this does that this does not make any sense, <coughs> uh, but uh, every artifact uh, has ID. In the game, of course, um, it can belong. Uh, it can be restricted to any faction that can wear this artifact, and it's a set. Uh, we have different sets in the game. There is a type. There are six different types of artifacts, uh, different levels, different ranks, then different rarities. Uh, we have uncommon, common, rare, epic, legendary. There, each artifact some, has some primary stat and some substats. <clears throat> command line tool does is just filters uh, and uh, searches uh, for specific uh, uh, type or set uh, or rank uh, um, or statistics and that's currently all so it's not very useful but it's just a proof of concept how this can be used so we can get and help for that and then we can sort by uh, I don't know uh, maybe rank uh, if I have uh, any five rank artifact I have um, this is a new account so there are not many artifacts which have five rank five uh, we can actually pass multiple uh, filters like three or four through there are too many of three so we don't want them to see um, so we can also search uh, for example uh, let me quickly look what are the filters uh, for the primary stat attack and now I am only have an attack and uh, if there is maybe a substat with speed there are also two and I can actually also sort by, by a, a stat and if I sort by speed it will actually sort me by the most speed value <coughs> and then the lower uh, so yeah this is this is just a basic example um, how this can be <coughs> how this could be used um, as I already mentioned uh, this is not very powerful now uh, let me see if I I've changed something I did uh, what did I do uh, so, uh, refactor the uh, uh, show of substats as string slash and let's push the code and let's go to our windows machine okay let's start now the raid and we also need to start the web the raid toolkit which i already installed but i need to run it first uh, uh, where are you? So it 
it is running hopefully okay now the play game is running uh, so I'm very low uh, because I started uh, completely new account for this testing um, and uh, let's first see if we are communicating with if the rate toolkit is communicating with the supported okay now the rate has also died perfect uh, application started Okay, it's it's talking, it's talking, and now we should able to talk also. Let's for update what we did. And let's see, the Python rate controller artifacts get all. So we are accessing via client, that means we are connecting directly to, <clears throat> to the live data. And let's see if we are getting the same results. Um, so this is the game itself and let's try to filter if we have some four piece equipment uh, only three okay let's see if this this is true uh, so we need to look for the help first <laughs> uh, so i'm looking for the rank four some other guy or girl and I go to filter and say four and equipped oh no I have every one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven yeah it's working so we are getting the life results back um let's try to to Oh, defense critical rate accuracy, oh, not so bad. Oh, let's upgrade to ver to level four and see if we will get the instance 
resolved also in our command line so the divine life shield should be level 4 it's not so something it's not working as expected uh, provide artifacts of the complete okay maybe we were too fast uh, yeah so we need to wait a little so the, the there is an raid toolkit is probably pulling the data and um, uh, it's also taking sometimes a little time um yeah that's it that's actually it so it's working i have a working client written in python uh which is communicating with the raid toolkit and yeah so if anyone is interesting you can you you can access this um it's fully open source available on github the readme file um, is there <coughs> which basic usage and installation guide but if you don't if you have troubles to install it maybe you can ping me if you like i will i will always eager to help you and that's it <laughs> thank you for watching bye